This is Zonia, and you are in the zone. Tonight is a special late night daughter edition of ELO. So we're going to try and get our five matches in really fast. Uh, running behind this weekend. Got a lot of stuff that I wanted to do with uh, my family. And so uh, this is probably the only video that we're really going to be getting out tomorrow. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, but again, I just want to say first off, thank you so much. We've hit over 150 subscribers. We're almost at 175. My daughter is super excited about this. Um, just thank you so much, guys. It's... I'm, I'm just floored. I don't understand why you guys keep watching these, uh, but I'm really glad that, that you guys do seem to be enjoying these videos, and I hope that they can at least fill a small part and help you uh, improve your game in one way or another. Um, my daughter is very ready to start improving her game. All right, so as always, uh, we're going to be building a legendary deck uh, to do our legendary missions. Uh, well, not a legendary deck, but a deck made to solve these legendary... You get the point. Anyway... So, here we are at the legendaries. I'm going to go ahead and put these skip now before the deck building. If you guys are interested in deck building, keep watching. If you're not as interested in how to build a deck, um, then go ahead and skip on by using the button up above. Alright, so here we're going to take a look at all the stuff. We're already on mission 5 for Jungle. We're already on mission 5 for Uluwatu. We're already on mission 5 for Frozen. We're already on oh, only mission 4 for Montana. And we are already on mission 5 for Fang Pai Klang. So, uh, given this, we're definitely going to be using a Montana deck, and we've only got to win rounds, so it doesn't really matter what we're using here. Um, we're halfway there, so main goal is just to win rounds with Montana. Um, actually, I think because this is a only Montana has it here, I think I'm going to go ahead and do a mono budget Montana deck this week. All right, so we're going to go for a mono budget Montana deck. All right, guys. All right, so let's uh let's get to it so let's head to our collection and see what we are going to be working with this week yeah. budget montana my daughter is very excited for this all absolutely fantastic cards. I really like Lorenzo as well. I'm just going to start throwing in a bunch of cards that I like. Ah, uh, but I said this was going to be a budget deck, didn't I? Ugh. I'm going to have to go back and pull out a bunch of cards, aren't I? Alright, well, if we're doing a budget deck, let's let's go back up to the top and see what's actually here. I know a lot of these don't don't actually work. A lot of these aren't as bad as, as they look. A lot of these are much lower in price than what this this price tag here has. So what I'm actually going to do this time, because this is just absolutely crazy. Um, I cannot afford, I think, in Montana, at least right now, since some of the prices are inflated due to people expecting a CR coming soon. Uh, we're going to go straight to the market, and we are going to, we're just going to filter by uh, Montana, and we're going to go by cost. And we're going to see what what fits our criteria. Again, the criteria is it's got to be under 2K. It's got to be under 2K. Let's look at the price. See if we can even do that. If we can't even do that, then maybe we'll, we'll expand our, our idea of what a budget deck might look like. Yep, let's go at least three a CR. How about, how about we go with that? Oh, wait, look, I don't have any. One day, one day. Don't worry, don't worry, child. One day. Very exciting here. Okay, well, if we're gonna go with that, then um, looks like we've got cards. I really like Ivy. I'm not a huge fan of Simon, but a lot of people have been using him uh, because of his SOA. Um, not a fan of Ricardo or Angelina. Vecchio's not bad. Paolo is also not great, but not bad. Um, we've got all the Lino boys uh, here above the boats. Just four of the cards. Giacomo is not bad either. Um, <clears throat> Zodiac, horrible. Mortbax, horrible. Gary, horrible. Giovanni, not completely horrible. Uh, Lorenzo, oh, excellent. Lorenzo is, is under. Okay, um, so let's go back in 
over here and start removing things from the deck that we know are not actually going to be able to be in the deck, which is pretty much everything. So, um, a little more juggling here just to make sure that we get, get everything that we need. Anna, Lorenzo, Giovanni. thing to look at. Um, so we'll go ahead and put Ivy in here anyway because Ivy is going to work and we're going to have to take Dr. Lee's out. Um, he said Vecchio. That's right. Vecchio is not a bad card at all, especially in mono. A lot of these cards are only going to be working out because we were in mono. If we did not have mono, it would be a lot harder to uh, actually find a deck that works. Take this one in, take this one out. Giacomo. Let's see. Come on, guys. Oh, come on, computer. You can do it. You can do it. So I guess while we are uh, slowly but surely working our way through here, Paolo. What did you guys, uh, how, how did everyone uh, receive the latest New Blood release? I'm really excited for a lot of these uh, Star Wars cards. I think they're a really great theme addition. I think they're all actually fairly decent cards. Um, some of them obviously not, not ones that I'm going to choose over things that I already own, but especially for newer players, I think some of them are, are absolutely fantastic cards things that newer players will definitely be able to use to go ahead and jump right in and have a slightly better deck than normal, you know, for people who can't afford cards like Vector or uh, two stars that do a little more damage, you know, the new the new Vortex two stars can be great for them. Um, wow, really, Sharon is already over 2k. We do not even have enough cards to really make a decent, decent deck. Gonna get absolutely killed as well. If this is if this is the case. We've got to stick with everything on just the first two pages. Okay, okay. Thank goodness we've got Waller. Okay, we've got Waller, so we can have Waller, Orenichi, Prince. Oh, Prince Junior is just over. All right. Well, let's let's take a look at throwing in Waller and Orenichi, and then uh, see where we end up. excited for this Montana deck, aren't you? He's just very excited. Oh, so apparently since I switched, it uh, took out. Obviously, we cannot keep you two in the deck, which is horribly sad. I'm gonna leave Prince Jr. in there for now since he's only a 2,100. Um, just to see what I've actually got in my deck. We may actually have to do ELO. I'm not willing to put in a really bad card. It's just not worth it to me. I would rather save up that extra 100. So hopefully you'll forgive me. It'll still be basically. I mean, if you wanted to say a really you know, base deck, then we would say probably less than 15k. Since we've got 8 times 2, um, less than 15k, you know, you should be able to make that in 2 weeks, no problem. <coughs> Alright.
right, let's head to our deck and see if we even got anything that's that's gonna work here. We don't even have 50, so I'm pretty sure at this rate right now that we are severely undermanned. Are these all cards? Oh, uh, yeah, Kanasso is not one of the cards that we had. But all of these are cards that we have. So, okay, let's go ahead and... I'd forgotten that I'd already... I think 45 will we'll, we'll be okay. So we'll, we'll take another look at this. We're going to pull out all our cards. I've got to get rid of my uh, FPC hat. Oh, oh. Apparently my daughter really liked my FPC hat. I don't know. I didn't think it was that good. It was okay, but... Hang by. Wing in Alright, well we're at 26 stars, so that means that if I go ahead and pull out Prince Jr., even though I'd love to have him, um, that's going to put us one below, and I am okay with that. So, we will go ahead and go with this deck. Um, not, let me be honest guys, my, my feeling right now is that this is not the greatest deck in the world. Uh, clearly, um, we're going to be hoping we run into quite a bit of stuff because we've got Anna and Giacomo in here. Uh, so we've got Anna Giacomo, Ivy Lorenzo, Orinichi, Paolo, Paolo, Vecchio, and Waller. Um, well, the good news is that we do have uh, at least one DR here. The sad news is that it's our four star. We really don't want that on our four star, but. Not a lot we can do about that right now. Then we've got Waller, who's also a defeat card, which is fantastic. I'd like at least another one, but we're not going to get that that lucky. Our two stars are both really low in damage, so we're really going to have to look out for that. Um, Ivy's going to be one of our early round cards, which is really good because we are currently running uh, Lorenzo as a, a revenge card. It looks like, other than basically our two stop cards, we don't have a whole lot of conditionals in this deck, which is good. It's going to give us a little more freedom for play. Uh, but we do have this Ivy Paulo um, issue going on here where they're both going to have poison. And so we're going to have to watch out for that. Also, without Anna having a lot of damage, we're really going to be counting on kind of this poison to carry us through and maybe hoping that we can at least uh, catch one person with SOA with one of our stop cards, making it life a little bit harder for them. And also protect our Waller or our, uh, our DR if we need to. Uh, Lorenzo is above damage. Ivy, if she hits, can be above damage. Paolo can even be a bit above damage if we play him first. Vecchio with support is going to be a 6-6, which is fantastic, which will be above damage. Orinichi is a 6-6, is also above damage. Um, overall, actually, I think our damage isn't looking too bad, but our, our power is pretty, pretty sad here. If we run against uh, All-Stars, we're just going to have to uh, cross our fingers and hope that uh, the person we're playing against either has a much worse hand than us or isn't doing too well. So honestly, guys, I'm not expecting a whole lot out of this deck, but uh, you know, when you're on a budget deck, what else are you going to do? So let's go ahead and get into our games for this week. So, I'll go ahead and click on the button to uh, show you and prove to you that we are indeed at 1000 ELO. Uh, hopefully, well, I wouldn't expect quite as good of a, a run as last week, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Again, we've got a couple big cards that are in play this week. Would have been nice to be able to throw a Vola in here, for example, just to see uh, how, how she does. But um, I think it's fun to do a budget deck every once in a while. It kind of uh, tests your ability, even if you're an advanced player, to see if you can still pull out the win with cards that are a little worse. Okay, so we've got Junk TW, uh, level 87. Okay, so it looks like we've got a uh, Frozen Skills versus our Montana, so TWLD, Chiara CR, Dunia CR, and Plunk versus Giacomo, Ornichi, Paolo, and Vecchio. Um, looking at this straight across, equal in stars, but I do have a four star. 
He has no SOA, so that makes Giacomo pretty much useless other than just being able to block something. Um, he's got two defeat cards, and then he's got Poison from Dunia, who is going to rival our Paolo Poison for sure, which he'll probably lead with. Either Dunia or Plunk. Yep, there's Dunia. Probably going to make sure he gets that Dunia in, because uh, if he gets Dunia in, then he is going to be in quite the uh, pretty, pr pretty much sitting pretty uh, after he wins with Dunia, because then he can force a loss of pills with Plunk, and uh, TWLD is going to be his only life gain, but then he's also going to have Chiara to follow up with. So the question is, do we actually want to try and chase down Dunia? Um, if he's run 6 pills, that's going to put us at 54. We're going to need to put at least 42 up. Uh, which means that I could put 6 pills up with Paolo, but the problem with that is that 6 pills with Paolo is only the highest. And if he has gone to 7, then we are absolutely in trouble. So, what we're going to do instead is we're going to assume 5 pills. Okay, that's going to put us at 45, or 33 total, which means that I only need 5 as well in order to beat his Dunia. Um, chances are pretty good he's probably gone in further than that, but let's go ahead and be a little bit risky here. If we're able to get this off, then we're going to be in a great position for the rest of this match. If not, oh, excellent. All right. Um, so just recently I was reading through the forums as well, and a lot of uh, the advanced players were saying they were doing a lot of their calculations based off five pills. Um, and apparently that's because if you really feel strong about doing something in ELO, a lot of people like to only play five pills to make sure that they're not too far down in pills and that they don't go too far in. And they also want to make sure that they've still played enough pills in order to do what they uh, kind of need to do. So next we can expect this Chara uh, to, come, to come at us with full force. And um, the problem is that with the minus two, that's going to go ahead and put Orinichi at... Uh, it's going to put Orinichi at four, which means I would need to play two more pills. And that's not what I want to do. I want to force Chiara to have to play those pills, but I don't want to have to play three myself. And so I could go with Vecchio, but he's got a lot of damage on him. Vecchio is kind of the guy that we're, we're looking to in order to carry us through the end of this. So Giacomo, however, will be able to get to 10 with the uh, plus... Uh, the, 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 the plus one is going to put us only at 22, which means that Chiara can beat us with three pills. Uh, but that will also put him one pill down, which is exactly what we want. We want to start forcing him to be down in pills. Um, because at this point, he's in a lot of trouble. Because if he lets us win uh, this round as well, then he's going to have to win with Tiwi. And Tiwi's only going to be three damage, which means that he has to take this round. And we want to force him to play more pills than us, because he's ideally going to want to take both rounds with Chiara CR and Plunk probably not going to play Plunk this round because Chiara is his revenge. You know, that's that's what he wants to be uh, winning with. And the problem is, is for me, at least, the problem for him right now is that he's going to have to lead with either Tiwi Plunk in round three, which means I get to choose the matchup. And as is right now, Vecchio is going to be able to beat Tiwi LD, which means that I can match Orinichi, my DR, up with, say, Plunk. Um, so Chiara is going to get four. Plunk is going to get like two which means I only really need to do 6 damage. Paolo's already done 3, he's going to do 3 more. Doesn't matter, Tiwi brings the 3 back. Uh, basically, I guess what I'm saying right now, folks, is uh, we, we pretty much already won this match. Um, unless Junk TW can come up with some kind of brilliant maneuver in order to, to get through this. Chances are this is going to be a 3-pill Chiara. Just a 1-pill. That's really unfortunate. I guess he was assuming that I was trying to... Uh, just play him, and even though I'm now down a pill, it doesn't matter because I'm still going to be able to beat Tiwi because he's only 6 power, and uh, with a minus 12, that only gets him halfway there. I would need to be down 2 pills, and he would need to lead with Tiwi LD in order to win. So basically, all I do now is match up Orinichi with Plunk, Vecchio with Tiwi LD, and this game is over. So we've won our first match. Good game, Junk TW. Ten twenty-two ELO, so we have we have gained twenty-two points in ELO. That's fantastic. Um, we're gonna write.
write our uh, mini frustrated note. Not frustrated note. Our mini, our mini note. I guess as a, as a mod, people are less likely to uh, yell back at me. I guess now. Um, I really, really, guys. I, I just, I cannot emphasize this enough. Finish your matches. People who are trying to do missions cannot actually finish some of their missions if you decide to leave early. As you can see, I'm not over here like laughing at Junk TW. I'm not treating him like like he's trash or like he's a bad person. You know, he played a good game. He just got unlucky in round one. It all came down to literally whether or not I was able to perfectly call what he did. And when I did, it was pretty much over after that. But now what he's done is taken away from me some of my missions progress. That's, that's, it just really frustrates me that people are able to do that. Um, okay, it looks like the uh, message is finally finished. So again, guys, please, please finish your matches. Uh, for those of us who are actually trying to do missions, it will mean the world to us if you go ahead and do that. And so right after... Always make sure to uh, find the person. Come on. And go ahead and blacklist them, just so I can remind myself who the uh, people are that don't actually finish their missions. All right, so. Going. So we want to know, 1022 ELO, let's get into our second match. Takisidas, 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 anyway, it looks like he's from Russia, level 18. Um, nice little starter deck, Artist, Cutie, Sark, and Ector, uh, Nightmare, and Piranhas, versus our Ivy, Orenichi, Paolo, and Wale. All right, so um, that stop out bonus is going to be a real issue. So one of the things that we definitely want to make sure we do is try and mm, okay. So I'd love to play Ivy first, and I'm actually going to save Ivy, and this is the reason why, guys. Um, Ector and Cutie are his two best opening moves, ultimately. And so for that, I really want a 7 power card. Um, we're going to go ahead and go in 5 again. Because we don't have our bonus. Paolo will lose 1, but chances are pretty good he will not play Artis. He may try to play, he may try to play Sard. But uh, seeing who I have right now and knowing that I do have a DR or an Ichi, probably going to want to unload. It's going to make him want to play cutie earlier. Uh, if he plays cutie early, that uh, would perhaps give him a slightly safer stance. In that case, I probably should have played six pills instead, but I did not. Uh, the other reason we want to play Paolo first is because he is a three star, and so against Ector or cutie, he would win uh, the tie if they decided to go on. Okay, there is the early cutie. He's probably done at least six, if not seven pills on cutie. Oh, excellent. Only five. All right. Well, we have uh, come out ahead on this, thankfully. And getting rid of Cutie was a, a huge, that's really a huge bonus for us right now because Cutie was his, his nuke. And we've essentially taken out his nuke, and we have also given ourselves three additional poison, which means that even if he plays Ector now, we are going to go ahead and still be able to claim the same amount of damage as Ector. We want to make sure that Ector is or has been uh, played fairly. We really love to play Waller right now. However, I actually think it's going to be better to uh, to play Ivy this round because uh, more rounds of poison would be better and because Ector does not have his bonus. Uh, and Waller will go ahead and get his anyway. So we're going to accomplish basically the same task. Either way, and this is going to force a 4-pill by Ector. 
which is excellent for us. Four pill by Ector will work out in our favor. Alright, and so we have indeed taken this round as well, so our poison will now switch to a two min four. Um, so even though we are eight, we can go ahead and hit four right now. That also means that in order to maximize our waller potential, uh, we want to go ahead and save him for, well, it really doesn't matter which round, does it now? Alright, so we're going to go ahead and play Orinichi. play Waller <clears throat> because of Sarg and it really doesn't matter how how we do this it doesn't matter at all because we're gonna go ahead and take away two our main goal here right now is just to cause him a lot of trouble 35 uh, I should, probably should have just played one one more but 35 is still gonna mean that he's gonna have to go in seven pills with artists if he wants to win with that, or Nichi, because she's got the minus two damage from the one, we basically already got this wrapped up because we're going to be able to take him down to at least four, which means that he needs to do ten damage, and there's no way that he is going to get ten damage between these two guys um, because Ornichi has the minus two off damage. So we've already won this one. Uh, so good game, uh, Paxitas, and good luck with your uh, continued efforts in Urban Rivals, level 18. I look forward to. Uh, playing you again uh, after you get a little bit higher and a few more cards and a little more experience. Excellent. So we've moved up to uh, 1037 ELO. We're now 2 0. We've won three more rounds. Working on our poison missions down here as well. 27 out of 50 right now. Let's see if we can hit 30 or maybe even 35 before we finish these up. 35 is a bit bit of a stretch. It means we're going to have to take three and two of these matches and two and another. <clears throat> Alright, here's our third game. Uh, Don Denny, level 45. Straight up Uluwatu. Oh dear. This is going to present a problem for us, since we do have such low power. Looks like we've got Buck, Dylan, Mango, and Shayna versus Giacomo, Ornichi, Paolo, and Vecchio. Um, he's got, well, 14 stars versus our 12, so we're down 2 stars. Uh, he's got lots of, of damage across the board here. It looks like we've got somewhat the same-ish. Um, nothing to help our Giacomo, but our Vecchio is able to rival his Shayna. Our Orinichi is able to rival his Dylan, rival his Dylan. Uh, and Paolo is also, so I guess I, I'd say maybe I, I, I don't know. I Obviously I'm going to say that because he's got so much power on his side he's looking pretty strong right now. Um, my guess is because he's pretty strong right now, he's probably looking to build a pill lead because uh, I don't know if that's just going to be a lot easier for him down the road. Uh, and so Mango here is going to have the same kind of 12. Um, he's going to have... He's, he's by life, though, isn't he? Mango is uh, plus one, minus one per life, which is 14, which means that it is going to put Mango ahead of us. But because he's only four, I'm going to assume he's not willing to go in five. So again, we're going to try this magic five pill that seems to be uh, working for us in the first two matches. Let's see if the five pill works out again. 
Uh, I'll be very surprised if we see Mango here with four. Make me laugh. Okay, we just, just got the two here from Mango. Probably could have pulled off a few more pills, but that's okay because, uh, like we said, um, we really needed to make sure that we, we kind of take the rounds that we really need to take here. Um, he's not going to be playing Shane at this time because it's a reprise and it's probably going to be copying the bonus with Dylan. I think probably our one of our better bets here is going to be to go with uh, Orenichi. Dylan is just going to be able to completely kill us. So I'm going to play Ornanichi, and I'm going to play her with zero pills. Uh, normally I do not recommend this for Montana because um, people will check uh, occasionally. Uh, it can get you into a lot of trouble if you do not at least try and get under your min. Under your min guarantees a certain amount of pills that they must play. So for example, um, I could guarantee at least a three pill play would definitely get me at least a one pill advantage, or one pill give them one less of a pill advantage. Uh, but if you're lucky, and the way that I'm kind of thinking right now for the Uluwatu, probably he feels like my minus 12 is not a big deal, especially when he looks at my six power. He's probably just thinking, yeah, I can mow him down with the amount of power that I have right now. So I don't even need to worry about that. So my hope is that here with Dylan, uh, he's going to go in at least three anyway, which is excellent, which is what we were hoping for. Uh, we could have tried to play a few more, but because of the reprisal, it just probably wasn't going to work out. And we turn to one, our one pill gap close, uh, close the gap by one to uh, closing the gap by two. So now it basically just comes down to Buck and Shayna, and we know that we're going to see Shayna come out, because uh, if Shayna doesn't come out, then he's completely had a huge brain fart and has no idea what he's doing. So the real, the real test here is, can I take one of these rounds? I only need one, because Paolo is going to be doing two more damage, right? Because he's got his poison in the next two rounds. So. Ideally, all I really need to do is stop Buck. And playing early is going to hurt my poison. So, my guess is that he's not going to play a lot of pills this round. Even though he has Shayna, he's probably not going to play a lot of pills. Nine power. Even if he if he only does a, uh, a three pill with Shayna, puts him down two into my nine. I I cannot I cannot win that. I absolutely have to. So, uh, guys, basically when you're in this kind of situation and there's really not a whole lot you can do, uh, your best bet, in all honesty, is to go for the tie. And as you can see here, Vecchio is actually going to be able to do. Uh, 8 damage, and we're just going to hope uh, that with the 36 plus the 12 that we'll get from our attack, that he has not played more than 4 pills on Shane. If he has not, then we've come out with a tie, and that would be most excellent. If he has played more, then we are in big trouble. Fantastic. So, we're going to go ahead and get a tie this time around. Um, which I am more than pleased with, being down two stars and uh, him having most of his four stars, plus being severely outclassed by power. So thankfully this is just one of those times where uh, we can just say, you know, hey, uh, better, better a tie than nothing. So good game, uh, Don Denny. Um, well played. Not, not much more I can say about that. He, he did pretty much everything that he needed to. Very smart with his pill play. Didn't play a whole lot on Uluwatu because he knew he didn't need to. And uh, maybe if I had been a little more aggressive with uh, Orenichi, for example, maybe that would have done me a little bit better. Uh, it's unfortunate that Paulo's min is a min 3. 
as you notice, I played Paulo. Uh, if I had instead had Dr. Eliza, Eliza would have done one additional damage and started producing Toxin, and we actually would have won this match if I had had Dr. Eliza instead of uh, just Sneaky Paulo. <laughs> but we're looking at a budget deck here, so uh, with a budget deck, getting draws against guys like this are, are great because now we've actually still gone up. Uh, probably had way more uh, ELO score than us, so we're at 1040 now. We are now 2 0 and 1. Two more matches, guys. Two more matches. Let's see how we can do. We're doing pretty well right now. I think we've. I think we've guaranteed that we're going to have that uh, over 1,000 for the week. All right, we've got a strong Legenta deck coming at us here from Details 97, uh, level 35. We've got Glover, Laura, Sabia, and Thormund versus our Anna, Ivy, Loretta, and Waller. Um, he is definitely uh, shorthanded on his stars, so we are going to be ahead of him by two stars. Um, we've got to watch out for Laura. Laura is probably going to want to match up against Anna or Lorenzo. Um, Lorenzo we cannot lead with. Probably no I'm going to try and lead with Ivy, which means that Laura will not be led. Thorman could be led. Glover could be led. Uh, Sabia will not be led. So we're looking at either Thorman or Glover. Either way, Glover removing me to 5 is going to put me in a, a bad place. Thorman... I don't, I don't expect more than a 4-pill Thorman. Um, so I'm going to play based on a 4-pill Thorman, so let's say 44 uh, minus 12 is going to be 32, which means that we're going to need 6 pills. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of going in with 6, but let's see if we can pull it off. I don't... You know, the reason I, I assume no more than 4-pill Thorman is because he's only 3 damage, and given that I do have a lot of damage here, um, my guess is that he is not going to want to... Waste his Thorman too much, and even though I did say Glover, uh, which would pull Ivy down to five, uh, the minus damage on Glover will not be used, and so I am, I would say I'm about 75 to 90 percent sure he's going to play Thorman. Um, and again, because Thorman only does three damage, does uh, literally the least amount, and he probably wants to save Thorman. Oh, he has gone with Glover. Okay, so he did go with Glover because he was hoping that the five would. Oh, all right. So that was that was very unfortunate for us uh, because I took so long to play. It probably gave away the fact that I was going in pretty deep with the amount of pills. So what I probably should have done was at that point just said I've waited too long. I should switch gears immediately and just uh, you know like one one or two pill IV. It's too bad because that that five that five puts us in a pretty bad situation. We do have Sabia here. Um, it's going to reduce us to two anyway. But we really need to get rid of one because of Laura. Laura is going to put us in a very very bad situation. And so I think what we want to do right now actually is uh, we want to dump Anna, not Lorenzo. Lorenzo seems like a good good move here, but we're going to go ahead and keep Lorenzo instead, and you will hopefully be able to see why here at the end if we do it well. Um, I'm expecting this is a zero pill Savia. Wow. Okay. That I was not expecting. Hmm. Has he put himself in a serious situation here now? He's got me down by 8, which means that I basically need to win both of these. And Thorman is going to be able to hit 44, uh, still going to hit that 44. A 44 again, 32 minus 6 is 26. We're gonna. We're just gonna assume that he's gonna go in big with a Thorman. Uh, he's already played big twice. It would make more sense to assume um, that he would play nothing, but because this is ELO, I'm going to assume that he's gonna try and be tricky. And so, Thorman would be his best play right now. We tried to play relatively quickly, but 
we will see. Um, so the reason I feel he might play tricky, or trying to be tricky, is because Lorenzo is my safest bet. Basically, by doing this with Lorenzo, he may think, okay, you going for a KO? Going for a KO? No. Uh, okay. Well, so be it. My hope was that he thought that if I had Lorenzo in here, that I was going to play less pills because I have Lorenzo with this massive amount of attack manipulation that I, uh, I really wanted to go ahead and try and block. Alright, well, so be it. That is alright. Uh, this is the end of the line for us for this round. Let's rack up our first loss, so we're going to be 2-1-1. One, and one. We'll see how, uh, how far down we go. Very well played, details 97. Okay, so we're down to 1031 again, and that's, that's totally fine. No reason to worry about losing one. It can't be perfect every week. In fact, you probably won't be perfect every, every other week or every month. So uh, we've just gotten pretty late. Oh goodness gracious! All right, our fifth, our fifth round. We are, we are stepping into the frying pan. Good lord, level 102, uh, Alvin man, and we have Lajunta again. But this time we have Dean Pillskin, Raven, and Tolliver. Good lord, Raven. Woo! All right, um, Pillskin and Raven. Wow, how are we? How are we even gonna hope to deal with this? Uh, we've got no. All right. Um, so basically, what we're looking at now is we know we've got Tolliver. We know he's got Raven and Pillskin. He's not gonna need to play a lot of pills. I doubt he's gonna go that far in with Tolliver, but it wouldn't surprise me if he did. So we've got Anna, Lorenzo, Orinichi, and Waller. Anna is not going to do us much good. Lorenzo has the extra attack manipulation. Orinichi has the damage. Waller has the defeat. So all of them will work quite well, basically no matter what happens after this round, but we need to make sure that we, uh, we cap Tolliver while we still can. So we're going to go ahead and play the 5 again, because we know that that will still be a Tolliver 5 pill. Alright, so we are now only down one pill, that's excellent. We prevented any damage, which means that we do not have to worry about Raven, at least we do not have to worry about a one-hit KO from Raven. Now thinking about this Pillskin, he's probably going to be thinking, okay, I reduced them to 5. If I kept all my pills, that'd be 45 plus 12 would be 57. 57 would mean that he needs 9 pills in order to beat me, which means that he can only afford to play 1. So he knows he's not going to be able to get me no matter what with Pillskin. One of the things I want to do is I want to prevent damage, but I also want to scare him a bit. Raven, if Raven's going to, sorry, so if Raven is going to get to 24 with just two pills, what we want to do is we want to force Raven to have to play even more, and we don't want to give him a free win. However, he could use Dean in order to drop us, which is a very viable option. Oh dear, okay, um, well we're still going to go ahead and play two, because it's going to discourage at least the Raven play, um, because Raven would have to play at least four, giving us our defeat as well, moving him to seven. If he plays too many pills, we could basically just move in with Lorenzo next round, and uh, basically take him out. Um, so we're hoping here that he's going to four pill Raven. The more likely is that he will only two pill Dean and hope that he can catch Waller off guard. If we're even luckier, he will zero pill Dean, hoping that he can catch us off guard with a zero pill Waller. So we will we will see how he plays this. I would be very surprised to see Pillskin early. If he plays Pillskin early, then he's it may be simply because of Lorenzo and Ornichi um, both being only 6 power. 
you know, his pill skin is basically useless. And so that's one of the good things for us is that we're not really losing a lot of power from pill skin. We're actually already channeling that into extra damage, which is one of the few things that may actually help us win this battle. So again, I think I think his best play right now is probably going to be Dean. Really, he has played Pillskin. I'm very surprised by that that decision because Pillskin gives him. It's it's these people that pull down. It's these cards that pull your power down below theirs by at least two. That you really want to hold on to. I am extremely surprised because now I can basically match up Raven versus Lorenzo and then force a tie with Orenichi. Okay, you're playing Dean. Is this... I'm assuming you're just trying to, uh... Like, catch me off guard with a win. Um, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna just throw ahead, go ahead and throw Orenichi because uh, even if he does nothing, 56 from Raven um, is going to put him down to 38 and we have more than enough in order to beat 38. So I'm just, I'm gonna ensure that we at least get a tie here and if he plays a lot of pills with Dean or if he tries to Fury, then we've actually won this one. And that, that's the end of that. I am extremely surprised at how Alvinman played this. I definitely would not have played Pillskin in round three. Uh, in round two, I would have played Dean or Raven. Either one of them would have been a better choice and saved Pillskin in order to be able to ensure that that kind of uh, damage. Even a Raven would have ensured that his Dean would have been much more deadly. Anyhow, um, I'm sure uh, Alvin Man had his, his reasons, and uh, I'd actually be interested to hear them if, uh, if he watches this video. Um, so anyway, this is our fifth match. We're going to go ahead and be, uh, we're going to end this on a 3-1-1. One, one. Uh, I think we did pretty well. I'm extremely pleased with the result in this last match, uh, though I am, I am very surprised with, with how it turned out. Overall, uh, I hope you can see this deck is still, it's not bad, it's Montana. Montana is going to be strong. Uh, there, are, there's a, there, there are a lot of weaknesses to this deck, obviously, though. It's not, it's not the best ever. Um, but it, it was able to hold its own and even got us some, some pretty uh, good wins here in the end with uh, what we were playing against. So we're going to end at 1051 yellow. Great, we're going to be just over 1050. Um, how many... How many did we get? We're up to 32. Okay, so 35 was our, our kind of big long-term goal. Um, 32 is great. And so we're going to go ahead and go back to the ring. For five matches, again, 3, 1, and 1, 10, 51, ELO. Um, again, if you've got any comments about uh, the games this week or how they were played or any suggestions for uh, even me improving, uh, it's greatly appreciated. Please feel free uh, to leave me something and um, uh, leave a comment with what you thought of the deck and if, if you think you would try it or if you recommend it for uh, new players. Uh, again, I had, I, had to, I had a lot of fun with it. I, I think it, it did a lot better than I thought it was going to overall. Uh, but again, you've got to be really careful about which rounds you choose to play. And uh, it looks like this deck works a little bit better with a slightly stronger uh, first round play. A lot of people do tend to think Montana players is only starting with maybe uh, one or two extra pills, and so going in with five uh, is usually enough to catch them more than off guard, and especially because uh, with a 12 uh, gap, you can go ahead and tie anyone who has two more power than you up to six pills, uh, beat them or tie up to six pills. So um, again, that's all for this week. Thanks again for watching that. If you like this video please feel free to like it or share it and uh, don't forget to leave me a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe for more of my urban rivals videos this is zonia and you've been in the zone